we go more in deep with the calculation of the connector this time. We have seen an overview of timber building. We have seen what's the technology of CLT and general aspect of design. And now we see what we can tell about the calculation. As I told before, the timber material is an excellent material as regards the rate between weight and performance. But unfortunately, it's a critical material regarding the, the elastic uh, aspect, so the, the brittle aspect of the timber. Uh, it's an elastic material, so it means that it can move, but it's brittle. And uh, we have to solve this problem in the designing. And the perfect aspect is if we think about timber related to the connector, because in this way we really can dissipate energy inside a building. So, what happens? That we are in front of two different materials that are completely different behavior. And from the union of this material, we can obtain a perfect uh, behavior of the, of the houses. Let's say that the timber, why is so good? Because it's very good for fire resistance. It's a very, um, a very light material. So again, it's quite resistive, but light. So for the seismic behavior, it's perfect. And if used with the right steel um, connectors, can have a perfect uh, behavior in the seismic aspect. So this is uh, summarize what I'm speaking. Again, brittle material, the timber, and ductile material, the steel. So if you think about what I told before, so the fact of the heresy um, of resistance, we can understand that in this case, we have to provide to our connectors all the ductile part of our building. It means that the timber will be the resistive material that has to take all the loads and so on, and must be, must be connected link it through this element that can dissipate and it's where the energy due to the seismic behavior can move and can, let's say, throw away the, the energy that we have from the earthquake. This aspect that are quite common in the calculation of timber actually are not being so developed in the timber industry because uh, usually the Euro code gives to you only the way to determine the slip modules, the k -ser, I think it's clear, the, how the, um, the nails can displace and can move, but only one nail or one skews, but not in the total connections of a beam, of a connectors. And nowadays there are nothing in the industry to design uh, in the proper way the connections because of this lack of the code. It's not a lack of the code, but it's quite impossible to determine these slip modules from one connector to the total connector. And so what we have done with our company Rotoblast and with the University of Trento exactly this one. So we took all our connectors that can be suitable for all kind of timber structures and with different tests we were able to determine these values. This project is called XREV and it's exactly what I was explaining. We have the brittle behavior of the timber that we have to avoid and we have the ductile behavior of the connector but how much is ductile? What's the factor that I can use when I go to design? So what exactly the spring 
you know, in the, in the model, in the calculation uh, mode, in the FEM model, you need to um, like to represent and to model some spring in the connectors to have the final determination of this value. And we made this test on the screws, connectors, angle brackets and so on in order to give these values. So, a reduction of earthquake vulnerability. This is uh, the project, this is how uh, we want to help the designer to, uh, to build. Now I show you a video that show you this problem. So, uh, the problem is how to, to have these values to determine the behavior of the connectors. This is a typical situation in which you have your panels with your angle brackets and you can see that of course there is some deformation inside the angle brackets. Now of course this is a test a different cyclist of tests in which we try to uh, break the panels. So finally, we, weren't, we won't be able, but at this moment it's already broken the panel, let's say. But you can see in the first phase of the behavior of the connectors, how much is important to know exactly how much this displacement is. And as I told you, in the Eurocode 5, you just have the value for one nail or one skews, but not, of course, for all the connectors, which is with your anchors. Okay, this is just a test in the steel, but the anchors and the concrete, the steel that can be different, this is a steel 355, or the nails that can be nails, thread nails, just screws and so on. So the total behavior of the connectors is the most important and critical aspect. And this is like a revolution point of timber industry that we are trying to, to face in order to give all this, this value. So how our connector, how will we deform like a spring, like this kind of spring or this kind of spring? What's this number? And from a lot of tests, we were able to determine it. These tests, of course, are not required for CE marking. The CE marking is completely another way of, uh, of think. So for us, it was a very strong investment in, in technology and experimentational uh, values. But it was a request that we had daily from the engineers because all the time they asked us, OK, thank you for uh, giving us all the connectors, but how really they behave when you have wind seismic behavior, how they, do we really act? And we try to make this research and to give all the values. So in the catalog, for example, you see this is all down. This is the value of the case shares of the slip modules according to the Eurocode, which is something like 12,000 Newton on millimeters, but in reality, of course, you have seen that it's not so rigid system. So you have, you will be a more ductile behavior, and it's like a half the real value. But finally, with this value, you can model also uh, the CLT building in a proper way. Okay, and again, uh, what is important in the design of the timber structure? One of the most important fact is the choice of the Q factor. In the timber frame technology, of course, all the connectors are really, really ductile with the nails and so on. So in that case, the Q factor is really high. In the CLT factor, in the CLT building, instead, we are not able to provide a so high Q factor. We must say that we are around 2, 2.5 and so on. So of course, this is uh, a way that we cannot reduce so much the seismic, the, the, the seismic force acting on, on, the, on the CLT building. But we can anyway design and provide the final ductility of the joint with the connectors. Okay, so uh, this was an overview of the building. Um, now we go deeper with the calculation of the connectors. Screws for Grunem and CLT buildings. Okay, 
uh, what are generally the screws that you use for making this design? Screws are generally this one. This is the most standard screws. Standard screws, I mean, that are like a partial threaded screws and our SKUs use it to make all the connection panel to panel, floor to panel because they give like a shear resistance so you have panel to panel acting, acting like this one and the SKUs very simply um, avoid the sliding between the panels so the standard one the diameter used usually are from 6 mils to 10 mils Basically, the 8 mils is the most used. Totally different is this kind of screws. As you can see, of course, are full thread screws. What's the meaning? That in order to really work in the proper way, they need to be inserted not vertically, but inclined. Because in this way, the forces can develop along all the thread of the screws and not only with an embedment force in the shank of the screws. And then of course you have these screws, double threaded screws, which are quite similar to these screws and the fact that you have double thread is more technical and maybe we'll see later. And finally you can see some like mixed screws like this one. This one for example is a screw to realize the connection between the timber and the concrete. So are the screw that we were speaking before in order to realize this perfect behavior between timber and concrete. Of course, screws can be of different material. Can be in carbon steel, so carbon, standard carbon steel or in stainless steel. And oh, why? Well, of course, because of the use, the field of use of the screw. So if you are outside, of course, you will use a stainless screw. And if you are inside, it's enough uh, a standard screw. What it's important to say from the design point of view for when, when you design the timber is that the more your skills is on higher level of the stainless so that you can use in A4 for example the stainless A4 is the maximum level of stainless that you can have the less has the resistance of the screws during inserting of the screws. And opposite, a standard carbon steel screws, uh, which is not rec recommended to be used outside, it's instead very strong, so you don't need any pre-hole to make it. Uh, so in this table you can see that for corrosion resistance, the stainless steel A4 is the best, but is the worst during insertion. And for sure you need a pre-hole when you insert it. And the opposite, the carbon steel is not recommended for outside, but has a very strong here uh, behavior. Sorry, yeah. you're, saying, you're saying that it's got worse behavior when you insert it? Well, if you insert a stainless steel A4 without any pre-hole in a very strong wood, like uh, larch for example, very probably you are going to break it. So you insert it and you are not able to insert you break. Because in the life of a screw, there are two moments in which the screw is stressed. The first moment is when the screw is going inside the timber. And the second moment is when the screw is acting against the stress. And there are quite different moments. Because in one moment is the torsional moment, the most important while you are inserting. In the other case, instead, are the Johansson theory. And then we will see. But the first uh, approach, the first stress that the screws in her life has is when it's inserted inside. And this is related to that moment of the screws. Instead, for the second moment, the stainless steel screws are, be, uh, their behavior is quite good once it's inside. So no problem anymore for the resistance. Okay, so what's the use of the screws? Okay, in the roof, of course. <laughs> This is typical example of screws used for in the roof for shear, st shear stressed. So it's here a screws, and here a screws. So the force is in these directions, the force is these directions, the force in these directions, 
and here is mixed use. On the panel, of course, again, the standard skews, the shear skews, skews here, and the force is these directions, again and again. So roof, floor, various use. So now you, we start to understand why not only a shear stress is important in the skews, but also the axial resistance. Okay, here skews can be used to install this uh, concealed beam joint. Here are used with the plate, but use it inclined. Here we will see after maybe it's for placing the insulation. This is the roof, this is the beam of the roof, the rafter, and this screws enhances to install this part of the roof above the rafter with the insulation which is continuing so you don't have any interruption of the insulation it is very important to avoid the thermal breach in for uh, avoiding the wasting of energy and these screws with the double thread are able to make this kind of use and again, excuse, of course, why stainless, why A4? If we are outside, for example, in a facade, very important for architecture, very important for aesthetic reason, or close to the scene. And then the full thread skews used for withdrawal resistance, which is nowadays the most used and the most developing skews. So let's say that in this kind of connections, it's one of uh, the, the most, sorry, the most useful connector that we can have. And you can see how, which kind of connection we can realize just through screws. And here the behavior of the screws is completely different from the shear because everything is related to the withdrawal connection of the screws. And everything is related to this principle. So basically you have one couple of screws place it with an inclination of 45 degree that works by compounding the forces. So basically you have your shear forces acting here because your secondary beam, this one, is trying to slide down, but this vertical force is decompounded in one force here, one force here. So in one skew that will try to go down, so it's like um, tension. You have a tension in these screws, and instead you have a compression in these screws. So this compounding of traction and compression give you finally the total amount of the, sh of the shear inside. And of course, um, the force of a skew working in withdrawal is much higher than a skew working on shear because when you're working on shear you're working against the grain of the timber so you are going to create an embedment instead when you are going to work with the withdrawal you are working just in a local stresses along the thread these are principles that are in the Eurocon and we will see after so basically all kind of connection main to secondary and being can be realized with this configuration Again, the full thread screws can be used for hang, it, hang the beam on other beam and steel part of timber to timber part. You can imagine that uh, we need screws quite long, it's like 60 centimeter long screws uh, working with high resistance, something like 20 kilonewtons per screw and, and so on well appreciated for the reinforcement of course in the timber probably you know all this kind of beam can be realized with the technology because it's glue lamp beam so we can realize everything with the board we just have to glue in the proper way with some uh, um, bending in the in the beam but of course the timber inside will try to to go back to air, their nature behavior. So here you have some local stresses quite high, which are exactly orthogonal to the, to the grain, which is a very uh, problematic, uh, critical aspect of the timber. And so this screws enhances you to keep together all the grain and must be used. So, you know, in the Euro code, you have this prescription about the height of the beam. You for sure have to use threaded bars or screws. 
and these crews nowadays can solve this problem. And again, we were speaking before about the compound beam. So you have like an old timber floor like this one um, that you probably you have to uh, reestablish and you don't have strength enough for that timber. So what's the solution? To create another level, a structural level. So you can create or the concrete slab or also another slab of timber. So finally you will have this timber, existing timber, together with the concrete you have a completely new section but in order to work in this way, in order that this slab is not only uh, more uh, load on the timber, you must be, you must connect together because it has to become a rigid, a rigid slab. And this is basically the same behavior of the screws. You can see that the screws is placed with inclination and here you have the thread. So again, you understand what the standard skews working in shear and the st instead the full thread skews working with, with row resistance. And the same here, in place of the concrete, you just can put a uh, glue lamp, put it on the, the, the side, and again, the full thread skews that work in this direction. And again, in the, um, in the restoration, a full thread skews can help you in creating a new connection here to increase the timber section of, for example, these trusses, this detailing the trusses, and the full screws gives you a lot of uh, high glow to solve it. Okay, let's have a look to the production of the screw because it can be interesting for uh, what we are speaking later. So, of course, the screws. Uh, it's realized it through uh, steel bending wires and then from there it's all realized through um, uh, press work in cold. So of course all the production is quite easy because the wire come into the machine and everything is just pressed in cold and you can realize uh, the shape of the initial head where it's very important all the screws they have they need to have the name of the screws and the length. Why? Well, the name of the screws is very important, not for commercial reason also, but basically for engineers and for designers, because nowadays if you uh, place a screws, a connectors in a timber, uh, in a construction, you have to provide a C marking, but the C marking can be provided only if the controller in the construction site can understand which kind of screw is it. So the commercial name must be visible so that you can always understand which kind of screws is it, who is the producer and which kind of certification they have. And of course the length as well because you must be sure that the length has been choice in the right way and that your worker exactly places it as screws in that length in spite in, of another length. So this also is quite important. The thread, there is a second phase of uh, the production of the screws in which the wires come into this machine that is able to create this, this thread inside. And at the same also this milling point, quite important because during insertion you have all the chips of the grain coming up and in this phase of the screws the chips can be removed from your insertion. And, uh, of course, the tip, the point, also with this, uh, let's say, carving milling that helps the screws to work together uh, while it's inserted. And this is why it uh, can be also uh, self-perforating, so you don't need any pre-hold. So the technology must be quite uh, caring about the technology in order to make sure that the screws go inside fast in the timber. And then a specific and one of the most important process is the hot shock and zinc coating. Um, we have to imagine that the steel has a resistance about uh, 600, um, 600 Newton and, or millimeters and with the hot shock we are able to like to increase uh, the um, the resistance of the steel but at the same time to create it ductile so 
this, this steel must be also able to deform because you have to provide a bending in the screw of about 45 degrees in order that it's not going to, to brittle, to, to failure in a brittle way. And you can make it through this process. And finally, zinc coating in order to have a good behavior also in uh, outside but in covering situation. A final process is the waxing of the screws. In the waxing, um, you can uh, uh, provide the fact that during searching of the screws, you won't have any friction while the screws is going inside the timber. And the double process waxing can help this behavior. And then, of course, um, in the process, there is the packaging, the labeling, the torsional moment, uh, quality check, and the banging test, and so on. Okay. For calculation of screws, now we have seen everything about the screws. We are <laughs> seen how they 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 bore. Okay, regarding the the code, how we calculate the first code. Okay, is the Italian code, but anyway, it just gives to you the the factor that you have uh, to provide uh, to pass from uh, the characteristic values to design va values. So this is just generally and not concerning to the timber. You probably, of, of course, you know that you have this, this factor to reduce the resistance from characteristic to design. What is um, instead the code of the screws is basically the Eurocode 5. Eurocode 5, you know the Eurocode 5? Uh, I think everybody or anybody of you doesn't know any, any Eurocode 5, just to understand? No, so Eurocode 5, of course, is the timber, uh, timber code where you have both timber and connectors, and inside there you have all the rules. There is a big problem, actually, because in the Eurocode 5, regarding all the connectors and this part, this cruise, it's really an old code. You will see inside that the, all, the, the fact that the timber is quite challenging to, uh, to design is related to the fact how we calculate the connectors. Because in the Eurocode 5, there is like an old approach of the screws. So the screws, as <coughs> we intend, as we mean that we have seen the production, actually is not contemplated in Eurocode 5 which only speaks about what we call the coach screw or leg bolt. So like a very old technology of screws. So this is the discrepancy between the Eurocode 5 and instead the CUAP, the CUAP, which is actually how all the ETA of the screws of all producers are realized. So we will see from now on that all the calculation that I will show you we have always two road to, to go. Because the first road, let's say, it's the Eurocard 5, which actually takes into account this kind of screws. So all we think about Eurocode 5, that it's been realized to take into account these screws. Instead, the ETA of the modern producer regard this kind of screws, which we have seen how to be produced, and it's completely different. So, option one, going to calculate with Eurocode 5. Option two, going to calculate with the, the ETA. My suggestion is, of course, for designers, it's much easier to go with, directly with the ETA. Once, uh, at first, because it's modern approach. Second, because you really refer to the producer and to the supplier that you are using. Of course, for a designer that it's not inside a company, it would be much easier to work just with the code. We have seen before, we spoke about the CLT. So we have to design CLT, but we have to take <coughs> into account who's the final producer, because we don't know which exactly the thickness. And it's not so different from the screws also, because also in this case, uh, Eurocode 5 not always is the final uh, response to our calculation. So sometimes we have also to, uh, to ask and to be in contact with the, with the producer. So why? this is the only reason why sometimes it's complicated to, to design with timber. Anyway, let's see. 
everything is uh, related to the diameter of calculation that in uh, for euro code 5 is related to which kind of skew is it so if it's less than six millimeters can be treated like an analysis if, if it's more than six millimeters it must be treated like a bolt and this is maybe a little conf create can can create some confusion instead with the ETA the diameter of calculation is exactly that one so the the D one that you know exactly what what it is so this is the first approach according to it changes according to the theory and the, this is the, the theory of Eurocode which is good so it's the real theory of Eurocode and ETA which is the same is to determine the resistance of shear of a screws. So you can see here the behavior. The final resistance of the screws will be the minimum between the embedment strength, which is basically this one. So the fact that the shank of the screws is pressing against the grain of the timber and is going to create to local compress the grain. And then instead, the characteristic yield moment of the fastener, so how much it can bend. And finally, the withdrawal resistance of the fact that it's going to be removed. The minimum value of this will be the final resistive of the, of the screws. And this is the approach. So a little bit complicated at the beginning regarding the formula. Um, these are the three modes take, take it into account from the Eurocode and the general treatment of the screws. So the first mode is the embedment, the second mode is the um, yield moment and the third mo mode is the withdrawal. Okay, at the beginning it seems very complicated but actually uh, nowadays all the producer can provide you the final resistance of the screws and also the software and so on. So it's not so uh, complicated. Uh, what I would like to underline is just, yes, mm, this fact in blue is the rope effect, which is quite important. You can see that in the formula, it's like an addition because it's like an addition that you have in the shear behavior of the screws because of the fact that the thread part of the screws can compress together the element and can be uh, added to the final contribution at shear. So we have seen that we have three modes to have a look now. Let's have a look to the first mode, to the first way to fail of screws. This is the bandman strength. And the bandman strength, we are um, okay. We are lucky. It's not difficult to to calculate. Eurocode gives us the rule, and basically it depends on the um, density of the timber. And, uh, um, and it's easy, it's on the density of the timber and on the type of the timber. And with this factor, it's just how the grain of the timber can compress when it's in touch with the screws. Okay, the approach actually between okay, option one, Eurocode 5 and ETA are quite similar. So here we don't have much discrepancy. So the first mode, it's like this. The second mode is the characteristic yield moment. And here, uh, yes, also it's not so different between one another. Regarding the uh, Euro code, you have to make this distinguishment. So if you are designing a screws less than <coughs> six millimeters, you have to check on the formula of the nades. If you instead design a screw more than six millimeters, you have to check the formula of the bolts. In the ETA, luckily, instead, you have straight the values to take. You can see here the different approach. So uh, if you make the calculation according uh, to the uh, euro code for uh, coach screws, this is the values eight millimeters for uh, screw, modern screws, this is the value, so much higher. But if you take the ETA, this is the value, so a little bit lower. So <laughs> this is why it's complicated, because you have two ways to calculate it. 
But the best approach, once again, is to go straight to the producer and to find in their certification what's the value of resistance inside. This is the rope effect I was speaking before. So you can see that this is the typical situation which you have a shear connection and the fact this is the bolt, the fact that the bolt try to keep together the two elements, it also creates this effect to keep together. And so the code, the Euro code, code the Euro code uh, 5, says that this effect can be doubled for the screws because it's 100% taking into account. So it means that screws, of course, can have a much higher resistance to the shear thanks to the fact that they have the thread. Instead, for example, the dowels, of course, the smooth dowels, they have a zero effect because if you place here a dowel, the surface is smooth and it's not going to, to keep together the two elements. But with the skew, thanks to the thread, this is possible. And this is what happened so thanks to the rope effect, one example. So you can see that um, thanks to the fact that plus the rope defect here is helped from the fact that there is the head. So you have uh, this increment of the resistance given from the head of the screws. But basically, uh, this kind of, of behavior is um, important only in particular cases in which you need an extra forces in the shear resistance. Because basically, if you want to make it simple, if you have to make um, shear to shear connections, usually you never use a washer in the screws because you are working in the shear, so you don't care. If you are making instead a connection where you are hanging something and you don't have a full thread screws, which would be easier, but you have a standard screws like this one, in that case it's important to use a washer because just with the washer you have an increment of the surface of the timber that can balance the thread in here. This is like an example just to show you how the rope effect works and why in the final test this is like an increment of the resistance due to the shear thanks to the thread of the screws. Okay, all this theory that comes from Eurocode um, permit to determine the values of the resistance of the screws. But has a very big defect that does not take into account uh, the brittle failure of the timber, the potential brittle failure of the timber. So the Johansson theory, so the big formula that I showed you before, is perfect. They gives us, just from balancing the equilibrium between uh, the forces, what's the value to calculate the screws. But we don't know anything about the timber. And for this reason, the code had to introduce very strict parameter to avoid the brittle failure. So minimum distances by the edges of the timber and between the connectors in order to avoid this behavior. So let's say that the real theory of the connectors are the Johansson theory plus the minimum requirement of the code. And all this theory is given in the Eurocode with several uh, parameters that you should uh, uh, take into account when you go to design. And what is a, bit, a little bit complicated at the beginning is the fact that all the time you must be really focus your attention on the direction of the grain of the timber because if the direction is this one, <coughs> the most dangerous uh, point is this one. And maybe if the stress it is in this direction, it's not so dangerous in this point. So what is challenging in the timber connector design is always to focus attention on direction of the forces and direction of the grain. And between the comparison between these two directions, you can make your uh, design process. And these are, for example, all this prescription that you find inside the Eurocode. 
according to um, the direction of the grain and all the time is given through uh, times the diameter of the screw. So of course uh, uh, screws, 8 millimeter screws must have like a four diameter distances between a grain so it means four times eight, 32 millimeters. So of course it's related to the dimension of the, of the screws. In this passage of Eurocode I wanted to put here because it's curious. Uh, as I told you, the, the Eurocode has been uh, uh, upgraded in 2009 and only in 2009 for the first time we can see here that Eurocode 5 is speaking about the modern skills. Before 2009, if you take the Eurocode, the first Eurocode, so in 2004, if you don't mind, uh, if it's they are not speaking about the modern skills. Only in this part they say that the modern skill is self-perforating and so you don't need to make a pre-hole and you can take into account the rule of the modern skills. This is just to, to focus that a lot of time there is a discrepancy from technology and code. Furthermore, okay, we have now determined the value of resistance of the screws. We have understand that we must provide minimal distances and we also have to take uh, into account that if we place more connectors together, this group of connectors together are not only the sum of each connectors because we have to reduce the values due to the fact that there is like a group effect on the timber. And this is how we have to take into account. I don't go deep in, uh, inside, but just to uh, give you what the problem regarding the, the timber here, the code says that if we make like this staggering uh, installation, we can uh, have, uh, we, we cannot decrease the amount of the final values, but we always have to take into account a reduction if we have a lot of connector places together. So up to now we spoke about the resistance of shear resistance, so this kind of connections and this kind of connections. I also can give you an example of calculation, for example this one uh, if you are interested, I think I can send to you if somebody of you want, want to have in order to, it's an easy way to understand how to calculate. What is good that uh, all these passages about the calculation of the screws and also this example of calculation is inside our catalog. So I think it could be good also for people that is the first time that approach the timber design can be useful for them to, to have a look. And of course nowadays you can understand that all that formula that we have seen at the beginning, uh, it's, it's of course not all the time we are going to use that formula because at first a designer at first tries to make an Excel file to make it and finally it uses just the software that he can find in, in the industry. But in this case it's uh, a good way to uh, to have a look how, uh, where it comes this value of resistance of the screws. For example, in this example here is a standard uh, situation in which you have to solve this joint here. So you have here some data regarding what's going on. Um, you just determine the loads and the shear acting. And finally from combination, again in this case it's the Italian combination but it's not so different from the UK one let's say that we have a force acting there of 7.26 kN. Uh, this force is the force that we have to transfer through the screws. Okay, this is the situation regarding the screws. Uh, so the force you can see is acting here, so vertically, and we place this, the screws here, so like horizontally. So of course it's a perfect situation in which we have perfect shear acting on here. So the screws try to be uh, slided in this direction so the final resistance will be here. Okay, we made the example with two kind of screws, so the HPS in this case, uh, 
the name of the screws, 8 mils or 10 mils. We have to, we, we took the approach, the modern approach, so to refer to the producer, in this case to the ETA of the producer, we can uh, find from here the moment bending, yield moment bending that uh, it's used in the Eurocode to, to make the calculation. Here we have all our formula to determine the forces. And here we have a different way to uh, the form for the screws, so these first two are the embedment screw and the embedment failure, this one are the moment yield failure and this one is the withdrawal failure. Finally, the minimum one is the final resistance of the screws. So you can see that 8 mm screws has a characteristic resistance of about 3.25 kN. The same for the screw 10 mm is about 4.78 kN. So what's the meaning? Just to have like a um, material approach to the, to the screws. It means something like <coughs> 300 kilos. Uh, so you can see that just a screw 8 mm is quite uh, a strong resistance. But it's, it's interesting if you compare these screws with the behavior of withdrawal screws because this is a shear resistance which is not so high right the width row screws and so this is why in the next example we will see what could be also a good solution anyway this is how a what a screws what, what the resistance one screws we have now to reduce the va this value according to the 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 gam gamma factor i don't know exactly how to name it in, in english but the factor that from uh, our screws can be reduced to the design screws. This is interesting. This is according to Euro code. You know what? How much is it, this uh, factor? Exactly. This is Euro code is 1.3. Um, so this is just an Italian rule. This 1.5. So, <laughs> but it's different. You should make 1.3 if you are accor according to Euro code, or maybe according to UK is something different. It depends on yours. Code. So you can see that one skew basically is 2 kN, 2.2 with euro code uh, design values. So of course, finally, we have our force, it was 7.26, we divided for the values of one skew, and we see that we need at least 3.7 skews, so we need four skews to solve this um, detail, or if we use a 10 mil skews, we just need three skews, of course, it's a bigger diameter and a bigger uh, resistance. Um, so I want like to just to make clear that uh, actually just to obtain this value of the characteristic resistance, the formula are quite annoying all the time to make it. And it comes from this theory of Johansson. It's not over, of course, because we now have determined the values of the resistance, but now we have to make sure that the installation is made in the proper way. So we have to make attention to all the dis minimum distances that now we don't have so much time to go deepen, but just to take into your mind. So this was the approach to make calculation of shear resistance. As I told you, uh, it's a bit confusing that you have two approaches. I think that this concept were clear for everybody or uh, it's kind of new for somebody. It depends. If you have any question, tell me. This was just the shear approach, the, the, the shear uh, way to calculate, the calculation of the shear. Now I would like to have a look also to calculation of the withdrawal mm. resistance of the screws. Here it's important to understand that in the timber it's very important to understand what's the direction of the fiber because you can imagine that if I insert a screws parallel to the grain I will have like a cylindrical extraction of the grain but if I make the extraction on the orthogonal way 
I have a pull out of the brain. So it's total different failure of the timber and also totally different resistance. So in this part, you can imagine a timber like um, a group of um, strokes. And then if you instead we put the screws in the direction of the strokes, the resistance is not so big. But instead, if you put your screws in these directions, it's higher the resistance. So this is a very important approach to the timber regarding also the withdrawal resistance of the screws inside. And here the same aspect we can calculate both with Eurocode or with ETA. With the Eurocode finally in 2009, only in 2009, so quite recently, <coughs> There is a prescription in which we are not allowed to install screws parallel to the grain if we want to work in withdrawal aspect. So we can use at 45 degrees but not at zero degrees. Of course in the common industry, in the common bidding, it's quite common to use anyway. But the important is not to give this solution the uh, effect of structural behavior because if we design a, a screws exactly to to bear something here to withdraw it, it's not a, a good point to make it. How can I calculate? Option one, Eurocode. Option two, ETA. The difference basically is that again in the ETA you find exactly what's the resistance. These are the formula are related to the angulation of the fiber and my suggestion, again, is to take the formula given from the ATA of the producer, which is, for example, this one straight. So if we have to have a look, this is um, the effective number of the screws. So it means that if I have four screws, actually uh, they are working 3.5 because of this group effect. This is a number that is already given from tests. This is diameter, this is the length of the screws inside the timber, this is the density. And with basically a formula, you can determine how much is the resistance to withdrawal of the screws. Um, here is just to show you that if you change the approach of the calculation, you have different results. So, in this case, is the approach according to Eurocode, this is according to ETA, and this is according to QAP. But just to show you that basically the values are quite close, but you don't have the, the exact final values if you don't choose at the beginning which code you want to use. So this is very important in timber construction, just to decide which approach I have to use in calculation. And also this one is interesting. Here you can see what was the prescription of Eurocode 5 when it was released in 2004. And this instead is uh, the approach of Eurocode in 2009. So you can see that uh, there's a big uh, difference between one approach and the other approach because here we had the screws with 2.7, 2.3, and here it's 4.9. So it means that if you are going to calculate with Eurocode 5 of 2004, you are going to overestimate the resistance of two times like extractions. So you can imagine why this uh, subject of timber connectors calculation is very important, I think, to refer to the real producer of the skills because we had a uh, Eurocode a real code that was overestimated of two times. I think it's, um, yes, incredible this fact. So, okay, at least nowadays Eurocode 5 of 2009 is correct. Here you have some examples that which kind of structure you can realize. So here you have the shear forces and just throw skews placing with inclination, you can provide a very high force into the timber. These are general uh, connections that you can make with full thread screws. So, main to secondary beam, slab reinforcement, coupling of beams, put it together, 
hanged beam and reinforcement, timber to uh, steel connection and so on. So you can see that the word of the screws place it, incline it, it's quite well known and uh, quite well used in the design world of timber industry. <laughs> and this is finally how it works, this concept. So all this principle that we have seen according to Eurocode, actually, I think that also a designer is not going so much in deep end because nowadays there are software, there are um, book, handbooks, brochure, our catalog that can help you to decide how much uh, the resistance of excuse is. But from now on, you can understand why this solution is well appreciated. This is a simple decomposition of the force according with two components, which is just like the, let's say, the square of this element, because it's like a, a square, this one. And so basically, as I told you before, everything regarding this kind of connectors is related to this, let's say, approach. Vertical force, which is decompounded in a traction force in one screw and compression force in the other screws. And finally, the total amount comes from the composition of forces, where your final resistance will be just the component of the square of the vertical load. And again, to help, the, there is an example again. Here, it's instead you have still a shear force in here, but transferred from screws working on track tension. So again, you can determine the shear load, which is 7.5 according to the design. In this case, the approach is that you have the dimension of the beam, which is 14 times uh, 20 centimeter. So of course you choose the screws that has the good dimension to fit in the 20 centimeter beam, which is, for example, 22 screws, because of course you have to imagine that 20 centimeter, my screw is inclined, so I can increase the length of my screws. And in this case, I can see how long is the length of penetration inside the timber I can go to the producer to see all the values that Eurocode 5 uh, asked me, so the formula of Eurocode 5 asked me the Johansson theory, I put into my formula and I can obtain the final uh, resistance of uh, the screws. Okay, so here yeah, the determination of the forces is 7 kN which fulfill the register that you had uh, before. So these are like the principle where it comes, all the theory of the connection of the screws. Nowadays, hopefully, we have the software that helps us. So here is the final example. Data calculation was seven kilonewton. You, you can multiply for the component of the, uh, the element here, 9.9 .9 kilonewton, it's more than what you wanted and the, the calculation is solved. I was thinking that I was I was saying that hopefully nowadays all this kind of calculation that you can imagine that changes according to the direction of the grain because here the grain is one direction, here is another direction. You have such a big quantity of different situations that to make a verification all the time is quite a long job. And for this reason, of course, producers like us provide all this software calculation in order to make this kind of, uh, of connection. Okay, for the SKUs, this was, of, of course, I couldn't go so deep inside the, the problem. You have seen that it's quite uh, challenging. As I told you, what is very important, I think, is to understand what the final approach that we want to have. Because if uh, um, the designers start with the Eurocode 5 approach and want to keep on this approach, must know that uh, nothing is exactly given in that code. On the opposite, 
if you want to stay with the producer, the ET of the producer, you must know exactly what will be the final producer. And this is challenging because if you choose, for example, Rotoblast, then you have uh, the final values according to the experimentation test that we had on our SKUs approved by the CA marking. And so then now if you change, then you have to pass again to Eurocoil 5. So it's like challenging this kind of different project you have. Um, my suggestion is to keep on the modern approach and to stay like with the ETA all the time. ETA, which is uh, the second example that I give to you, we have still uh, five, ten minutes before the end of this session, um, which is much more easy also to understand because you can see that in the world of timber, it's becoming always more important the final determination of uh, connectors regarding the test. And this is a typical example. All these kind of uh, um, connectors are uh, specified to be calculated with the ETA. What's the meaning of calculation according to ETA? ETA means that you have to calculate according to that code when a code about that connector is not existing yet. So, for example, the Eurocode 5 doesn't say anything about this connector because Eurocode 5 says what the resistance of the nail inside these connectors but then you don't have anything else. So how could uh, a design, how can a design go further with this? Again, only the producer can give you this uh, final uh, statement because uh, in order to produce and to put into the market this kind of product, the producer has to develop its own ETA. And the ETA is realized with the principle connected to the Eurocode, but with also these general principle lines uh, related to the ETAG, ETAG 15 in this case. Um, so it's, it's like a way in which uh, the designer, in this case, it's like an executor of the code that he finds from the producer. This is like the approach that we have to have now. For example, the angle bracket that we have seen this morning can be divided basically in, uh, into two way, or two part, two um, type of angle brackets. The angle bracket working uh, on shear, so these forces, and angle bracket working in this the tension we have seen this morning. Angle bracket, of course, can be used in timber to timber or timber to concrete. And the general behavior is this one of this morning. The connection must be made or by threaded nails or by screws inside the angle bracket. And what is very important here is to say that if we want to have the safety that the angle brackets has the real resistance given from the ETA, of course these connectors must be uh, certified according to the CE. Otherwise, if you don't know what's the resistance of these connectors, you cannot determine the final resistance of the angle brackets. So this is a very important approach. So of course the angle brackets must be used with uh, CE market traded. So we have the reference to what is going on in that connector. <coughs> so shear angle brackets, as I told you, basically the force we are interested in is this one. An old approach that we had um, up to 20 years ago was very complicated, once again, was to uh, determine all the positioning of the nails in order to determine the um, the eccentricity of the final behavior of the angle bracket from the theoretical point of view. But it was quite complicated uh, also because actually there was some approximation related to the final position of the reinforcement of the steel that um, weren't so clear to determine the final eccentricity. So nowadays the final project every producer has is just to test it. So you can see the test is realized in uh, this big approval body. There are few in Europe, few in the United States, uh, where all different producers go make the test according to standard given in other code. And finally, the resistance quite easily is given from straight in the ETA. 
So for example, we are speaking now of the Titan angle brackets, one of the most uh, used for the shear stress. And you can see here that straight the code, the ETA gives to us. Okay, your angle brackets, your resistance, if you use nails, is 15 kilonewtons. If you, nails, if you use screws, is 18 uh, kilonewtons. And that's it. And this, of course, is an approach that uh, the final designer cannot, uh, cannot touch with his hand, this behavior. Uh, but it's, it's the only way nowadays, according to the code, to, to find out the final resistance. And then in the market, you know, there are a lot of other angle brackets and usually all basically the difference is angle brackets working in shear, like for example, this one, and angle brackets working on tension, so the higher, like this one, like a hold down. For all down, the, the principle is the same. If you take the ETA of the all down, uh, in this case, WHT, this is the ETA, you can see here that it's given straight the resistance of timber, so I mean the nails inside. You can see that here it's given that, for example, let's say uh, nails 4 times 6, 16, 60, which is basically the standard nail, like this. The resistance is about 2 kilonewton characteristic. Then we have the resistance for steel and then the resistance of the bolt. So finally, the resistance of the old down, of course, will be the lower between the three different resistances. So what's the real work of the designer in this case? It's just to use the right factor to pass from the characteristic values to the design values. What's the meaning? That you can see here, yeah, this is the concept content in the ETA. So you have to use the right factor for the right failure. And this is the example. We have seen that you have three ways for the old down to break. The first one is related to the nails, to the timber. And in this case, your K mode, okay, depends on your um, life load anyway. And the factor is 1.3. So according to the Euro code for the connectors. But the steel failure related to the bending of the steel here is related to another factor. And this factor must be used from the design. So the design is the responsible of the final factor to take into account for passing from characteristic to design. This factor you don't find in, in any code. It's on your um, safety uh, self mode mindset. And according to your um, yeah, approaching of, of the problem. And the most dangerous instead a situation is this one, so it's the tensile steel failure given from the ETA, what the ETA, what's the characteristic resistance, but then you have to use this kind of factor. So finally, you understand that um, it's easy because you have all these different uh, values from the ETA, but then you have to be sure which factor you have to use. And in order to go a little bit deeper in this problem, who's really inside the designing of CLT uh, houses knows that there's another problem in Eurocode 5. The fact that these nails actually, according to Eurocode 5, you have seen that it has a shear resistance of about 2 kilonewton characteristic, is the value that you can find here, let's say. But actually, and tests and tests shows it, the real resistance is 3 kN, so much more. So what, what's going, what happens, right? That we expect to design this one, that if it's just 2 kN, maybe this could be go in crisis. We expect that it goes before than we expect. So it means that not always we are able to provide a uh, ductile uh, uh, failure if we, are, we don't give the same, the real importance to the problem. Because we have to avoid this problem, but if we put too many nails inside here, the risk is that the resistance of this part is so high that the crisis will arrive in this element. This is a bit complicated maybe, and this is what also Ario Ciacotti focused attention during our courses. Uh, but it's just to, um, to tell you that 
in the behavior of the CLT regarded to the seismic is a, is a challenging approach. Uh, luckily, you are in, in, in territory where seismic is not so high, so maybe the problem is <laughs> not so important. But this is what design have to challenge all the time when they make the design. Uh, more than just to determine the resistance of the different connectors. Anyway, these are two examples. So how to give the forces of the small old down that we have in our range and the big old down that we have in our range. So two different uh, values. And uh, this is how to calculate the anchoring of the, the, the anchor because of course, you have to provide also that the force that is taken from your old down, it's standing also on the concrete. And this is the modern approach. This is the TR029. Um, in, in here, through this ETA parameter, you can see what the resistance of the pullout strength of the concrete. So just the design of uh, old down sometimes can be challenging. Luckily, in our case, in the catalog, we put all the values already calculated, so <laughs> you can see it. And this is finally the approach. So the force that I have to, to remove with the tension must be verified inside the concrete in here. And again, the basic scheme that we always have. And this is the final example that once you have determ determined the value of your hold down and the value of your shear anchor brackets. You just need to verify the most uh, stressed wall here that this force is enough to take away this resistance. And in here instead, you take the linear um, load along the panel and you can divide for how many anchor brackets you use and you make your verification of the panels quite in a um, basic, <coughs> basic, basic way. Okay, it was a bit challenging this part maybe, or, or depend, it depends which kind of approach you have the timber if you are already inside the design or it's the first time that you approach timber. As I told you, uh, it takes time to the fact that the timber has different grain directions and to the fact that the formula to obtain the register of connect is not easy. Calculation of timber actually it's quite easy regarding the timber itself a little bit more challenging re regarding the, the, the connector probably. So this is like the difference of approach between uh, uh, timber and other material probably. Okay, so we want to make a break or no? Yeah, sorry, any questions? I think yes, no, <laughs> I hope not, yes. You mean on the anchor? Yeah, yeah. well, there is a. Well, it's double jeopardy, you know, if you're relying on that stability. Yeah, but, but you mean on the concrete or in general on the timber? You've got many fixings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, this is one of the, um, the principles that is inside the DIN regulation, so the German approach which was real the first and the best code that we have on timber. Uh, unfortunately, it's like the old method, not the characteristic way to approach a timber, but was the easiest and the most uh, used uh, code uh, in the past. And in fact, this is one of the principles of this regulation and that it says something like, one bolt is no bolt in timber. And this is the, the, the principle. So the fact that you always need to have at least two bolts. So we have seen before in the example of calculation, we had the eight mils screws and we need at least four. This is why, why this, because timber is a natural material. So can be the most perfect uh, CLT and glue lamp building that you have but uh, to being a, a natural material you can have a small defect and if the screws and the bolt is exactly on that defect uh, you, you are in trouble. 
And so this is maybe what you refer to. Yeah, well, it, it happens not so, it, it happens quite often because uh, we also are involved sometimes in some uh, uh, investigation regarding failure of timber and the concept of the robustness and so on. And we have seen that there is uh, like a, a lack of uh, um, um, care in making some details. And a lot of times you really see that people forget to install the bolts there where it was designed by the engineers. And also a lot of time in the, in the industry of timber, it's strange because engineers that are at the first approach to the timber sometimes just design the timber building and then they say, okay, the connectors X to the final installer. Yeah, but we have seen that <laughs> the connect is probably the worst part to, to design. I mean, the, the most difficult part of design. And I don't know if, it, if it's a, like an Italian uh, mindset, but this happens so many times to us when new engineers approach to the timber and they call us and throw our salesmen and say, OK, you have to make calculation of all the design of the the timber and okay no it's it's not possible for us <laughs> because we don't know which which forces are acting we can provide and suggest um, a solution uh, in the detailing but not more so of course this uh, approach is it's very important to to take into account and it's in also interesting to say that uh, yes this german code can be also a good uh, reference for you uh, there is the old one is of 1988 is regarding the old approach of calculation with the tension, not characteristic, but then it was upgraded in 2008, the DIN. And for example, when uh, before the Eurocode changed the rule regarding the withdrawal resistances that we have seen that it was doubled than the reality, we had to take the values according to DIN also in our catalog because otherwise it was impossible, too dangerous to, to go around with that prescription. Unfortunately, I think it's just in German, but um, probably it's, it's a few years that I don't have a look anymore on the website, but I think that nowadays there could be also in, in English and has a very practical approach this code and it's basically more better than the Eurocode also. Yes? Um, I'm aware that your My Project software includes sort of moment connections and I wonder whether you're going to talk about that at all. Yeah. Okay, this is an interesting question. Um, okay. Yes, let's say that um, My Project has the typical connection, this one, so with the full thread skews that we have seen before. There is a new release, uh, you are referring to that one, it's about one month ago, maybe less, uh, in which in we, uh, we, we now provide also the moment bending resistance. In order to show it, I can open the th third session, so I can show you and I can explain how it works. <laughs> 